Deja Vu You walk into your favorite coffee shop and suddenly everything feels like a repeat. The smile on the barista's face, the sound of the espresso machine, and that girl on the corner on her phone. It's like you've seen these events before even though you haven't. Your brain is basically screaming, this is all too familiar, while logic counters with a sure no. You've just experienced deja vu, a memory glitch that occurs when your brain accidentally files a new experience as already seen. A simple way to think of it is your memory software lagging, causing present perception to feel like a memory. Scientists believe that deja vu is your brain's temporal lobe glitching, resulting in a strange overlap between short-term and long-term memory signals. In short, you're not a psychic, but just experiencing real-life buffering. Jamais vu. You're writing the word love, and after the sixth or seventh time, it seems wrong. The letters seem strange as they stare back at you. Suddenly, you're wondering, hold on, is this how people spell things? A word you've known your whole life has just become nonsense. That is jamais vu, often considered deja vu's evil twin. Instead of your brain registering something as overly familiar, it rejects it entirely. Every day things seem brand new or strange, like seeing your own name and thinking it's spelled wrong this time. According to experts, jamais vu is your brain's way of resetting, momentarily halting the connection between recognition and meaning. This phenomenon often occurs when there is repetition, causing your neurons to tire from processing the same input, thus resulting in a temporary revolt. So, no, love didn't just become a weird word. You were gaslit by your brain. Tip of the tongue. Friends are keenly following as you tell a story when suddenly you go blank. The name is right there, drifting from reach. You squint, snap your fingers, make weird sounds, and even give it a shot like it starts with a K, I swear. However, your friends can't help either. They just lean in and wait for you to figure it out. But even with the pressure, nothing comes to mind. You've just experienced the infamous tip of the tongue glitch. You know the word or phrase, but retrieval stops part way. Think of it like your brain opening the correct file folder, but the exact word fell under the cabinet. Experts believe this occurs because the sound or spelling pathway didn't light up all the way. It explains why you can recall bits like, it's just four letters, but can't remember the actual word. But don't worry, that word often comes back to you when you lose sleep at 3 a.m., except no one cares anymore. Childhood Amnesia Someone asks you about your third birthday. Cake, balloons, chaos, yet your brain just can't bring up anything. It feels like your life before you turned three was erased from the archives. Undoubtedly, your parents say you did some cute things, but your memory files are non-existent. Childhood amnesia just reared its head. The majority of grown-ups cannot remember early childhood memories because the hippocampus, your brain's memory center, was still developing at the time. Combine that with inadequate language skills and events that weren't properly stored, and things only get worse. So, those old photos? Sorry to break it to you, but they are likely just how you think you remember events when actually you're putting together stories your family tells you. It's not that your childhood wasn't fun, only that your brain was so busy developing to keep records. In other words, your childhood memories are under permanent 404 file not found. False Memories you're 100% sure that your best friend wore a yellow shirt that day. You even swear it in court. But then, the evidence photos are brought up, and he was wearing an orange shirt. You just unlocked a false memory. Your brain is not a hard drive, but rather, more of a poor improv actor. Each time you remember something, you alter it a bit. And when suggestions, leading questions, and imaginations are added into the mix, things get jumbled up even more. Psychologist Elizabeth Loftus has proved how easy it is to implant fake memories in people. In one of her studies, subjects remembered getting lost in a mall as kids, yet it never occurred. Your memory isn't just a recording, it's a remix, and the more you remember something, the more you risk altering it. So, the next time you're 100% you remember something, take it with a pinch of salt. Mandela Effect Your phone illuminates your face in your dark bedroom. You're scrolling the comments after getting sucked into a heated debate. Did Pikachu ever have a black tip on his tail? Some commenters swear yes, while others are adamant it's no. That debate just ushered you into the world of the Mandela Effect, a memory glitch in which a group of people confidently misremember the same detail. The name comes from people who recalled Nelson Mandela dying in prison in the 1980s when, in reality, he didn't. The Mandela Effect happens due to brain shortcuts. 
You fill in gaps with familiar patterns, for example, assuming that Pikachu's tail matches his ears. Rumors, repetition, and pop culture also play a role in ingraining these errors into people's memories. Consequently, many people start remembering the wrong thing together. Most importantly, the Mandela Effect has nothing to do with alternate universes. Regardless, it's harmless to think of a world where Berenstain Bears really were the Berenstain Bears. Confabulation Remember that time you were telling a story at dinner when, partway, you started making stuff up without knowing it? Your friends were impressed, and that only made you keep delivering more and more twists, turns, and punchlines. Well, that's what confabulating is. On the surface, it seems like lying, but unlike it, confabulation isn't intentional. Rather, it occurs when your memory attempts to fill in gaps with reasonable guesses. People who've suffered traumas to their brains or with conditions like Korsakoff's syndrome tend to confabulate. Strangely, even healthy brains also do it. Think of it like your brain hating to admit that it doesn't know something. So, instead of saying, I don't know, it comes up with filler details. It's pretty much like the autocomplete function on your phone, only that it's gone rogue. But perhaps the strangest bit of all is that confabulated memories feel just as real as the true ones. You can even take a lie detector test and pass while telling those made-up stories. So, the next time Grandma insists she shared a pizza with the queen at the diner around the corner, don't spoil the fun. Imagination Inflation Imagine this. You're daydreaming about riding in a space shuttle as a child. The more you dwell on it, the more real it feels. In the end, you're 100% certain it actually happened. Good job, you've actually fallen for imagination inflation. A memory glitch that occurs when visualizing an occurrence tricks your brain into believing that it's a memory. As you are busy imagining the event, you're unknowingly strengthening the mental image until you can't distinguish it from reality. Experts have illustrated that simply asking people to imagine an event, such as getting lost in a mall as kids, makes them more likely to recall it in the future. To put it simply, your brain doesn't always clearly identify memory and fantasy. The more realistic the imagination, the stronger it becomes. That trip to France as a kid? Well, it never happened. Your brain is just a great liar, and it lied to you about yourself. Post-event misinformation. You've just witnessed a car crash. A while later, your friend says, Did you see the white car run the stop sign? But the car was red, you wonder. Suddenly, your memory shifts, and you're convinced it was white. What happened to you right there is post-event misinformation. Memories are brittle, and even more so right after events. When you're given misleading information, your brain rewrites the memory to match. Psychologist Elizabeth Loftus illustrated this by asking several subjects about car accidents. When Loftus used the word smashed instead of hit, the subjects recalled the vehicles moving faster than they were. Exterior influence changes how you describe events and how you actually remember them. But do you know the most disturbing part? Courts used to heavily rely on eyewitness testimony, even though it's easy to manipulate. Source amnesia. Imagine you're seated at a dinner table surrounded by your family and friends and you're telling a really funny story. Everyone is laughing at just how hilarious it is. Then, just as the laughter dies down, someone asks, Where did you hear that? Your mind goes blank. Did someone tell you? Did you come across it on Instagram or TikTok? Or maybe you read it on a blog? You realize that you can't pinpoint exactly where you got the story. This is what's known as source amnesia, a phenomenon where you recall something but can't remember where it came from. Essentially, your brain keeps the content but misplaces the origin tag. This memory glitch can sometimes make you repeat false or uninformed opinions confidently as facts all without being consciously dishonest. Cryptomnesia in 1969, English musician George Harrison, best known as the lead guitarist of the Beatles, wrote, My Sweet Lord, an instant top charter worldwide. Soon after, a production company known as Bright Tunes sued him, claiming that he copied the melody of the 1963 number one hit, He's So Fine by the Chiffons. Now, while Harrison did admit to knowing the Chiffon song, he denied copying it. A judge later ruled that Harrison likely accidentally copied the song and ordered him to pay over half a million in royalties. Harrison's case is one of the most famous examples of cryptomnesia, sometimes known as unintentional plagiarism. Cryptomnesia is a memory glitch that causes you to recall a forgotten piece of information or idea, believing it to be something new. It is common among writers, artists, researchers, and even inventors. With cryptomnesia, 
you're not intentionally stealing an idea. Rather, your brain has retrieved the information but forgotten the source, which makes the information feel like inspiration. Misattribution In 1984, Jennifer Thompson, then a 22-year-old college student in North Carolina, was the victim of a violent attack at knife point. After reporting the incident to the police, a sketch of the assailant was made. Jennifer was then shown photographs of six men. She took several minutes, after which she chose two photos, and then more time before finally choosing a picture of then 22-year-old Ronald Cotton saying, I think this is the guy. On viewing a lineup of seven men, she again wasn't sure but eventually decided that Cotton looked most like her assailant. Her testimony in court led to the conviction of Cotton on two life sentences. After serving 11 years of his sentence, DNA determined that he was, in fact, innocent. The real perpetrator was caught and sentenced. Cotton's case is one of many where eyewitnesses misattribute a crime to the wrong person. Misattribution is where you remember the content right but attach it to the wrong person, time, or place. Also happens in harmless everyday situations like remembering an event you witnessed in real life, only to later learn that it was a scene from a movie you watched, or crediting a fact to one person when you actually got it from someone else. Flashbulb Memory Glitch When you think about a traumatic event in your life, such as the day you lost someone close to you, you can probably describe everything about that exact moment, from where you were, what you were doing, and even what you were wearing. It almost feels like the moment is frozen in time, like a mental snapshot. This is what's called a flashbulb memory. But as vivid as flashbulb memories can feel, they're not always accurate. The human mind isn't a camera. And as time passes, it tends to mix up the details of our past experiences, sometimes even combining multiple events into one memory. These changes create a re-edited version of that memory in our mental library. Unfortunately, flashbulb memory glitches are actually more common than you may think. For example, 10 days after September 11th, a group of researchers interviewed several people about their recollection of events and experiences. Then, they conducted a follow-up interview every year for the next couple of years. Throughout the study, the subjects remained confident in their memories about the events of that day. However, the researchers found inconsistencies between these later recollections and the initial interviews. Memory Decay If you were to buy a new phone today, you'd probably spend the first few hours installing all your favorite apps. With time, however, you'll only end up juggling between a handful of those apps on your home screen. Eventually, you forget about all the other apps, and your phone offloads or archives them. This is similar to how your brain works. Unused information or memories fade over time, a phenomenon known as memory decay. Now, a memory doesn't just vanish. However, over time, its strength drops, unless you refresh it, and it just becomes harder to retrieve. This explains why cramming for a test actually works in the short term, but since you never revisit the material, it's almost impossible to recall in the long term. Memory decay helps keep the brain efficient, so it doesn't waste energy remembering every random detail you come across all the time. Overwriting Picture this. You've opened a Word document saved on your computer to add something new. So, you type the new details and save, and close the document. Later, you realize that you erased part of the original text, and now it's gone forever. This is known as overwriting, something that your brain does a lot too. When you retrieve a memory, your brain reactivates it, kind of like opening a file on a computer. However, when it restores that memory, new details often sneak in. After a few cycles, the original memory gets overwritten. A good example of overwriting in real life is in the case of eyewitness accounts where hearing another person's version of events can change how you recall the event yourself. Unfortunately, unlike a computer, where you can undo changes or create backups, the brain is constantly making permanent updates to memories with no backup for the originals. Chunking errors. Think of a phone number you've memorized. Chances are that if you were to say it out loud, you would say the numbers in chunks rather than individually. 212, 345, 6890 is easier to remember than 2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, 0. While the human brain is capable of storing vast amounts of data, working memory is quite limited. So, it uses something known as chunking, which is where large amounts of information are stored in smaller groups, or chunks, rather than individually, to maximize short-term memory. Now, while chunking is efficient, it's not perfect. Sometimes these 
chunks can get mixed up. And suddenly you have a stranger on the other end of the call asking you who you are when you could swear that's your friend's number. Chunking errors can happen for a lot of reasons, from poorly structured chunks to overly broad chunks. Repressed memories. Ever had an intense emotional reaction to a person or a place, but can't consciously remember why? This could be a case of repressed memory. You see, your brain can lock certain memories from you in a hidden part of your mind. It doesn't erase them, but rather makes them inaccessible to you. Usually, your brain does this with memories of highly traumatic experiences as a way to protect you from emotional overload. These memories can resurface when exposed to triggers or through therapy. But when they do surface, repressed memories can't always be trusted as the brain is notorious for distorting memories and even creating false ones as we've seen in our earlier entries. So, which one of these memory glitches do you experience the most and which one frustrates you the most? Let me know in the comments below. And hey, if you found this video fascinating, don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe, and share it with someone who'd love to dive into this weird world of memory with you. Thanks for watching.